this course, you will learn everything that there is to know about stencils. What stencils are and what materials you will need, where to find designs and even how to create your own designs, as well as how to cut them using any one of your Cricut devices and how to use them. My name is Kelly and I'm one of the Envato Tuts Plus instructors and I will be taking you through this course today. And we're going to be using fonts and vectors from Envato Elements in this course. They have such a wide range of vectors and fonts that will work perfectly in this course. And with their easy to understand licenses and no lock-in contracts, you can cancel at any time. So what is a stencil? A stencil is an object that is largely made out of plastic which has letters or a design cut out of it. And you can place this on top of something and use an ink or a paint on top of that for that design to then show through on whatever it is you're placing the stencil onto. And you can get two different kinds of stencils. You can get a reusable stencil, which is what we're going to be covering in today's course. And you also get a single use stencil, which is largely made out of vinyl and is a little bit easier to use. Reusable stencils are the most popular type and people use them very often for things like cookie decorations, clay stencils, mixed media, decorating walls, alcohol inks, etc. And they're made in a very wide variety of design types. What can a stencil be made out of? The most popular plastic material to cut your own stencils out of is mylar. Now mylar comes in a few different thicknesses. You can get a very thin mylar up to one that is quite thick and a lot more heavy duty. What you may not know is that there are many other objects that you may have lying around that you can also make stencils out of. These are things like plastic file dividers, overhead transparencies, and even some acetate that you might have as well. But you can really use any one of the list of items that I've just mentioned to make your stencil. It very much depends on the application type that you're going to be using. If you're wanting something a little bit more sturdy, then you would go with a much thicker mylar as they are a little bit more heavy duty. When looking at what type of designs will work on your stencil, because you're cutting something out of a solid piece of plastic, you need to make sure that all of the little bits are connected to the main sheet. So as you can imagine, this can get a little bit tricky, but don't worry, we're gonna cover everything on how to set up your stencil design in this course today. And we're going to be looking through the Envato Elements fonts and vectors, and I will show you what to look out for when designing your project. Now, what will I need for this little short course? We're going to need the plastic type that you've chosen for your project, whether it be Mylar, Overhead Transparency, or Cricut Acetate. You will need your Cricut machine and Cricut design space. If you're using the Cricut acetate or overhead transparency or a thinner mylar, then you'll be able to use any one of the Cricut machines. And of course, we'll need a font and or a vector file to work with, which we will be choosing in Envato Elements. We're going to start off in Envato Elements by choosing a font for our stencil. Now, when choosing a font for your stencil, there are a number of stencil fonts that have already been adjusted and adapted to perfectly suit any one of your stencil needs. So if you don't want to convert an entire font or a design to a stencil font, then you can choose an existing font, which is quite nice. So in Envato Elements, you can navigate to the fonts section. So if you click on the fonts tab, then it will load everything that it has. And you can actually search within the fonts as well for a type of font that you might be looking for. So if you are looking for a stencil font, you can quite simply just type in stencil and it'll bring up a very long list of fonts that you can use. And pretty much all of them will be perfectly suited to your needs in creating a stencil. So as you can see, they have little lines and things that join up the parts together. And these will help you to create a design with a lot less effort up front. But what I'm going to be doing in this section with you is I'm going to be taking a font that is not designed for stencil use, and I'm going to be showing you how to convert it. I know that I have a lot of fonts that are my absolute favorite. And if I want to use them for a particular project and to use them in a stencil, I'd like to be able to do that. So we're going to be using the Sunday Ice font, 
It is a nice soft font and I think it's perfect for what we need to do. So I'm going to click on download and I then need to add it to a project in order to download the font. So I'm going to click and I'm going to type in stencil and I'm going to add it to that project and then download and install the font. It'll download a zip folder. So we want to open up the zip folder and we're going to install the OTF or the open type font. You can install the TTF if you prefer, but I prefer to use the OTF where they're possible. It will then open up the font and then you can click on install and it'll then install that to your computer. And if you already have Cricut Design Space open, don't forget to close it and open it again so that the font will be available in your Cricut Design Space. So in a new project in Cricut Design Space, we're going to click on text on the left hand side of the screen and it'll open up a text box. One of the very fun uses of creating a stencil is being able to put a nice monogram or something like that on top of coffee. Now, I'm not very good at it, but it is a lot of fun. So I'm going to use the ampersand, which is the and letter. And as you can see, there are a few parts of this letter that aren't very well suited for the stencil font. But first we need to change the font. In the top left hand corner, I'm going to click on font and I'm going to then search for the Sunday Ice font that we just installed. You don't need to type in the entire word. It will find the font even if you just use a few letters. So we can see there it says Sunday Ice and that is a perfect font that we're going to convert. Because we're going to be making a stencil, what I like to do is to add another shape onto the outside so that we know exactly what is going to be part of the stencil and what is going to remain. Because we're going to be working with the negative of the design, we're not going to be working with the positive, which is what we have on our screen here. We need to make sure that we are looking at it from a different perspective. So I am going to add in a shape and we're going to add in a circle to create the negative. So the circle I'm going to then make much bigger and I'm going to scale down the and a little bit. So we have a lot of space around the outside just to make sure that we don't have any overflow or any splash. Now this shape, I'm going to send it to the back so that I can see exactly what I'm working with and position the ampersand in the middle of the circle just to have everything organized. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to click send to back and position it in the middle. If you want to get it exact, you can click, drag and highlight both layers. Go to the align panel, the top of the screen and click center and then it'll bring it to the middle. So what we need to do now is slice these layers, which means to take out the positive that we were seeing and that then creates a negative design. So we're going to once again, click, drag and select both of the layers and then we can either click slice in the bottom right hand corner or we can right click on the design and then click slice. You won't really notice any change on the design, but in the layers panel, you should see that you have three layers where you only had two. And when we move the circle out of the way, that is exactly what we want. So that's what we want to cut. And that's kind of the end product that we want to end up with. So I'm going to click, drag and select both of these ands and I'm going to delete them because we don't need them anymore. It's a lot easier to explain the stencil part when we're looking at the negative of what we're going to need to cut because when we're working with our stencil material, the circle that we see now is exactly what we will end up with. And as you can see, those two little parts in the middle, if I zoom in a little bit more, those two little parts in the middle are loose. So because the stencil needs to be one solid sheet and you don't want to have little pieces that you're then placing in specific locations, you need to make sure that they're connected to the rest of the circle. And the easiest way in doing this is to add in something to the design and then weld it. So I'm going to add in a shape. It can be pretty much any shape that you want it to be. You can make your life easier and just add in a rectangle. Or if you want to try and keep the design very similar, you can add in a circle and keep it nice and soft, whatever you find works for you. So I'm going to make this a little bit smaller, but I also want to rotate it. So what I need to do now is go 
move my mouse to one of the white blocks in the corner of the design and move my mouse a little bit further out. And you'll see there it just changed to a curved line with arrows on either side. And if I click now and drag, it'll allow me to rotate the shape. So I'm going to rotate it and make it a lot smaller because that's a little bit too big and move it to part of the design that I want to have it on. And a lot of these you'll have to just gauge with your eyes to see if the sizing is correct on how you want to have it. I think that looks pretty good. But before I weld it, I want to right click and duplicate it because we also have the bottom part here that we also need to do exactly the same thing. So with it duplicated, it has a duplicated somewhere else on the screen and this typically happens when you're zoomed in quite a bit so you might need to zoom out and try and find it and there it is so let's just move it closer and zoom in a little bit more and I'm zooming in by pressing control on my keyboard and scrolling in with my mouse so we can do this in one of two places we can either have it there or we can have it at the bottom now I think I would want to have it here because then it'll have a little bit more of a flow on the loop. So I'm going to make this a little bit smaller and I can see that it doesn't really work there. So I'm going to rotate it a little bit and make it a little bit bigger, but I still see that it doesn't work quite well there. So what I want to do here is I want to make it longer, but not wider. And I need to do that by unlocking the proportions because Currently, the proportions are locked, meaning that the height and the width of the block will stay in exactly the same ratio. So if I need to make it longer, but not wider, I need to click on the little padlock at the top and the middle of the screen and unlock the proportions. So now when I open it, it will change like that. And we can once again rotate it so that it works nicely with the angle. And we can see that looks a lot better. This one I want to move down a little bit and I can see that that works really well. So now what I want to do is I need to make sure that these parts all stick together and the easiest way to do that is to weld them. So we're going to select each three of these objects and I'm going to hold in shift on my computer and click on anywhere on the gray portion and I'm going to keep holding shift and I'm going to press click on this little block as well. Now you'll see on the right hand side that all three of the layers have been selected. So now we can right click and we can weld or we can click the weld button in the bottom right hand corner. You'll see those two have disappeared but now all of the parts of the ampersand have been connected to each other. This means that when we cut it, those little parts now won't fall away. They're all connected so we can actually use the ampersand as a little coffee decor. So when we zoom out, we can see that it still looks like an ampersand, a little bit more of an S. So if you aren't quite happy with the placement of your welding, you can click on the undo button in the top left hand corner and undo the weld and then make a few adjustments. So if we then zoom back in, we can click on this lower one and I'm going to make it a little bit narrower. So I'm going to unlock the proportions again and I'm going to make it a little bit narrower while still keeping it longer. And let's rotate it. Move it a little bit. There we go, I think that looks a little bit better. So I'm doing the same thing again by shift clicking all of the layers, right click and weld. And that looks a little bit more like an ampersand, a little bit less like an S. So I tend to play around with them quite a bit when I'm doing this kind of design work and undoing and redoing the same steps over and over. So your project might look a little bit different to mine and that's perfectly okay. So just keep in mind that you might need to backtrace a few steps and go ahead until you get the perfect spot of your design that you want. And when it comes to making a coffee stencil for this particular project, you don't want to have it too detailed. You may lose a little bit of the detail when you put the cocoa onto the froth. I say this like I'm a professional, most definitely not. <laughs> 
and then you can start to cut your design. Now for this part of the project, we're going to be choosing a graphic to make a stencil out of. So it's going to be a more repeatable pattern or a more generic type of pattern that you can use and the options really are endless. So in Envato Elements, we're going to look at the graphics section. And what you're wanting to look for here is something that has high contrasting colors, not a lot of detail. So if you think of like a honeycomb, that would work very well, or some repeatable pattern type styles. Typically something that you would classify as a pattern or something that is very basic and doesn't have a lot of detail to it. So I'm going to look under the patterns section of the graphics, or you can click the patterns filter on the left hand side of the screen. So a lot of these designs will work very well. As an example, this vector background will work very well for a stencil and the stencil would be the white part that you would cut out of and the dark gray part would end up being whatever you're using your stencil for. So if we scroll a little bit further, we can see that there are lots of ones that are very beautiful, but they wouldn't work for stencils because there's too much detail in these designs. So we're gonna carry on scrolling the simple chic is very pretty. This would also work very nicely because it's a very simple, like I said, it's, it's two-tone, it's black on white. So as an example, in this picture, you would have all of these white bits cut out and the black part would be your stencil. So when you use the stencil, the white parts would have the color on it from the ink onto your wrapping paper or whatever the case may be. But the one that I'm going to be showing you today in this course is the Christmas patterns. So this is a fantastic one because there are many different types of images in this set. So you have baubles, dots, reindeer, Christmas trees, and they can be used for many different things. It's not only related to Christmas, which is really nice. You can see here under this section, there's just normal circles, there's arrows, stars, many different types of patterns. So I'm going to click download and I'm going to once again add it to the stencil project or how to make a stencil with Cricut, the short course that we are on at the moment. And I'm going to click add and download. Now that it's downloaded, I'm going to open the zip file and I'm going to extract the files. So I'm going to click on the JPEG click extract to and I'm going to save them in a location that I'll remember in the future and then when I'm ready to import them into Cricut Design Space to use them then I can. So I've saved the JPEGs in this particular case because I don't need either of the two other types. The ones that you are looking for to use in Cricut Design Space are JPEGs would be your last choice. PNGs are better than JPEGs because they typically have a transparent background so there's a little bit less work to do and SVGs are pretty much your number one choice in these cases because they have a lot less work that you're going to have to do there as well. But I chose the JPEGs in this particular class because I want to show you how to use JPEGs and how to upload them in Cricut Design Space which is what we're going to do next. So once we have downloaded the graphic set and saved it to our computer, we're going to go into Cricut Design Space and upload the file. So once again, I'm gonna click on Upload, and I'm gonna click on Upload Image. I'm then going to browse for the file or drag and drop it into the little box. And for this one, I'm going to use the one that looks like Christmas baubles. And in this particular case, I can select simple if I need to, because it is a high contrast image. It's red on white. So there's only two images, but if you want to have a few more colors, you can select high complex and you can see how the image changes a little bit. So we're gonna click continue under complex. And here is where we need to process the image. So I'm going to zoom in quite a bit so that you can see what I'm doing and we can see all of the baubles there and we're going to need to remove the white background because if we had to continue we can see the preview over here it would just be a flat block which we don't want so we need to tell Cricut Design Space what part of the image we don't want and what part of the image we do want. So I'm going to click on the white because I want to remove the white background as part of the transparent PNG type. By removing the white background, it then kind of turns it into a transparent PNG. 
and we can then just have the bauble elements on it. If it doesn't look all that great when you click on the white, maybe it might have some pixelated edges on the corner, you can scroll down a little bit and click on the more options selection here. So you can either reduce the colors, which will be similar to what we selected on the first screen, you'll be able to see how many colors are on the screen. So because we only have two, it, this won't make a difference here. But what we can do is to change the color tolerance. So if you have something that's a little bit more of a shaded color, or if you have rough edges, then you would want to increase the color tolerance. Now what this does is it'll look at the color that you're selecting that you want to remove, and it'll see 16 colors around that color. So if you think of a color wheel, you have multiple different colors around it. It'll take a white plus a tiny little bit of red or a white plus a tiny little bit of yellow. And it'll take 16 colors that are the closest to that white and it will include those when it removes them. So the higher you make this number, the more colors you're going to remove. And that generally helps by removing the ragged edges along the outside to increase this number. But in this particular case, we don't need to, because if we zoom in really far, we can see that we've got nice clean edges. There's no white remaining on the outside, and we can just click continue. If we want to preview it first, it'll show us what the cut lines are going to look like. So I recommend always previewing before going onto the next screen. So we're going to click apply and continue in the bottom right hand corner and now we get to the same image again where we see the cut image or the print then cut. We're not going to be using this for print then cut so I'm going to just select cut image and once again we can change the name if we want. So instead of Christmas pattern 12 we can change it to bauble pattern and under tags we can then add things like Christmas pattern, baubles, etc. And we can click upload. Now you'll see the image here on our uploaded screen. So we're going to click on it and add it to the canvas. And here is where I like to play around with the image quite a bit. So once again, I'm going to reduce the size because the size is very big. So before changing the size, I need to click on the little lock proportions. Otherwise, we're going to change the one size and not the other. So we're going to lock the proportions and change the width to around 30 to make it a little bit more manageable. If you're not quite sure on how big you want the actual little dots or the baubles to be on your stencil, you can use a shape to gauge the correct size. So we can add in a circle and reduce the circle to roughly the size of one of the baubles. So we can see there it's around, it's around one and a half centimeters or so, which is a decent size. So I think that's a great size to use. So I'm just going to delete that. But if you want to keep the baubles at one and a half centimeters, but you want the stencil to be a little bit smaller because 30 centimeters for a stencil is quite big, then we can just slice it. So once again, I'm going to add in a shape and I'm going to add in a square this time. And we're going to make the square around... 20 centimeters. And I'm once again going to send it to the back so we can gauge to see how big the stencil is going to be. And I'm going to maneuver it over the block. I'm going to select both of them and we're going to slice. So we're just cutting away the, the extra part of the stencil that we don't want. And I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to keep that part of the stencil and I'm going to delete both of those because we don't need them. With the stencil, you can see that there are a lot of bits on either side that have been cut off that aren't complete baubles. You can cut it like that if you want to. I prefer to not cut it like that. I prefer to remove them from the stencil. So what I'm going to do now is go to the contour feature. And the contour feature allows you to remove certain parts of a design if it is a basic cut design, as long as the lines are a complete circle. So the outside of the cut line is complete. So we go to contour, and you'll see your design here. When you hover over it, you'll see that they change a slightly darker shade of gray. The hovering is not always very accurate, so you might need to play around with it a little bit there. But if you know that these parts that you want to remove are the smallest parts, then you can just scroll down on the side because this is based in 
descending size order. So the ones at the top will be your biggest baubles and the ones at the bottom will then be the smallest parts of your design. And that's universal across the, the contour feature. So if we want to remove all these little bits, we can then just click them on the side panel, which I find very useful if I'm struggling to select the design. So I'm removing all of the parts of the design that have a flat edge at one point. Now, these ones I can see are all complete circles, so I'm going to leave them. Another way of removing parts of the design are to actually click on the design itself. So when you hover your mouse over, like I said earlier, parts of the design go a slightly darker gray. So when you click them and you move the mouse away, you'll see now that they're an even lighter gray than what they were before. That means that they are now hidden from the main image and you won't be cutting them. You won't see them in the design. So I'm going to click all of the ones that are sitting on the edge that have a slight part cut out. And we can see now that there are lots of parts in this design that have slight parts that have cut out that are on the edges that are a lighter gray than the rest. So we can click away. You don't have to click OK. And you'll see that there are now only solid circles on this design, which is exactly what I wanted. So now we follow exactly the same principle as what we did for the first design by adding in another shape. So we add in another square. Let's make it bigger. I'm going to right click, send it to the back, and we're then going to slice. So I'm going to select both of them and align them to the center. And then because we have two layers selected, we can now slice the layers. And that gray part will then be our stencil. So we can select both of those two layers and delete them because we don't need them anymore. So now that's a stencil we've created from a JPEG. I'm going to just resize this a little bit as the media that I have to cut from is a, an A4 page, which is 21 centimeters wide. So I wanna make sure that it will fit onto that page. Now we're moving on to cutting the stencil. So one of the things that you can use are clear acetate sheets. And although they are a little bit pricey if you buy the Cricut brand, you can get clear transparency sheets and those are a little bit cheaper. You should be able to get them from most stationery stores, so they should be quite accessible. I'm going to be using this type of transparency. Now, this is just what they call just a frosted sheet. I like to use the frosted sheets because you're able to see the stencil a little bit easier than if you had to use a clear acetate sheet. It is a little bit thicker than the acetate sheets, so you do need to make sure that you are cutting it correctly but it's also a little bit nicer to work with as a stencil because it has a little bit more strength. Another option if you're wanting to go for a stronger than this option is like I mentioned Mylar. So it comes in a few different thicknesses and if you're looking for a very strong stencil, that's another good option. This is also a typically a very cheap one and you should be able to find it in most stationery shops. You should also be able to find some white plastic. Now this is a little bit thinner than the frosted sheets and it is another great option. So like I mentioned, when it comes to cutting, you need to make sure that the settings are correct. So because the frosted sheets that we're going to be using today is a little bit thicker than the Cricut Acetate, I need to make sure that I have a cut setting that is going to be correct for that material. Now, please make sure to always do test cuts before using a new material. So pick a setting, cut a little square before jumping into a project like this so that you don't go through some heartache when you end up wasting some materials. So I'm going to click make it on this one and I'm going to show you how to create a custom material which we're going to do for this particular material. So I'm going to be cutting this on a mat. So I'm going to click continue as that setup is all correct. Though I can select acetate here on the screen, I'm rather going to click browse all materials to add in a custom material. So if we search for the acetate here, we can see what kind of settings that we're working with. So I'm going to click on that one and I'm going to click material settings. Now acetate here says the pressure is 350 and it has a multi cut of three times using the fine point blade. Now I want to add a new material because I want to have a multi-cut of four times. So I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom, click add new material, and the material name I'm going to put frosted sheet. 
And here is where I can change the settings. So the setting for acetate was 350. So I'm going to put this on 350 as well, which is right at the top. And it had a three times multi-cut, which means that it's cutting the same thing three times. Now I know from my tests on this material that that didn't work. So I needed to do at least one more cut. So I'm going to put it on four times. If you want to change this in the future, you can just follow the same steps and then increase this to five times. And I'm leaving it on the fine point blade and I'm gonna click save. Now that material setting is there so we can scroll down to the bottom and click done. And then we can search for the material that we've just added. So there we have frosted sheet and I'm going to click the little star because then that adds it to my favorites. So it will show up on the screen as soon as I go into it. I'm going to click on it as well to select the material and I'm going to click done. Now I'm going to load the frosted sheet onto my mat. I'm going to be using the standard grip mat and cut it on my machine. So we first start out by removing the protective sheeting on our mat and then placing the frosted material in the top side of our mat. Now you can press it on with your hands, but I always recommend to use a brayer because with these kinds of things, it can very easily come up. You need a good adhesion on your mat. And this type of a product really helps to get it to stick down properly. And I would also not recommend using a mat that's very much dirtier than this. This is kind of the edge of dirtiness that I would use. And then we load it into the machine and we cut. So now that we have our acetate cut, I'm going to flip it over and remove it from the mat. And of course we can use our spatula to remove the little dots. I normally tip it up on its side and use the spatula to remove them like that. You can also use your scraper. I find that sometimes it does a slightly better job on the harder substrates. Spatula, I like to use the lighter ones. And now we've removed all the dots from our mat so we can put the protective sheeting back on and hang it up for later. We should also just be able to pop most of these out because they should have all cut. And here we have our stencil. So now we're gonna get out our wrapping paper. Now you can use pretty much any wrapping paper for this. I have a brown paper bag that I'm going to use as they are very nice and inexpensive and they will work brilliantly with the colors of ink that I have for this project. I have a few different colors of ink so we can do a little bit of a rainbow as I don't have all of the colors but it'll, it should look great. So we have our brown bag and let's start with a yellow ink. And I also have these little sponge daubers. Now they're nice because they fit on your finger. Obviously when you don't have long nails like me, they will fit a little bit more snugly. But what is really nice about them is when you press them on, they obviously pull up the ink. You can use bigger ones as well if you want a sponge that gives you slightly more coverage than what these will. These will allow you to get the nice fine details. So you can line up your stencil and I'm just going to work upwards. You may not see this color as nicely, but should work. And what is nice about this is you can actually line up the baubles as you're going up the design with the previous ones that were there. And I'm going to use a different color. And then of course we just work our way up with each of the colors. And of course, because the ink dries very quickly, it's super easy to reposition and you can just go over it, say over and over again until you complete the whole bag. Now, of course, you may not necessarily want to have such a small stencil with such a big bag. So maybe keep that in mind when you are designing your stencils, but they are a perfect way of getting lots of coverage done on some super cool designs. And then before you know it, you've decorated your entire bag and you can now put an amazing gift inside it. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the Envato Tuts Plus YouTube channel. We've got lots more Cricut videos coming and I'll see you in my next one. And remember, be kind to someone today. See you soon.